I have a question for you. Do you like when someone confiscates your assets? Then you will love the new stablecoin of PayPal. With state-of-the-art asset freezing technology, this is the only coin that can protect you against the danger of decentralization. In this video, I will walk you through the code of their stablecoin and show you exactly how PayPal can take all your money. And I will also explain the huge impact that this will have on crypto. You will be very surprised. On August 7, 2023, PayPal released a stablecoin. It's called PiUSD. And no, it's not coded in Python. This will be pegged on the US dollar. At any time, PiUSD is redeemable against dollars. PiUSD is backed by real money at a company called Paxos. Paxos has a very important role. For every dollar issued by PiUSD, Paxos needs to hold in reserve the same amount of money. Which brings the question, should we trust Paxos? This is a rhetorical question. Of course we shouldn't trust them. In fact, we shouldn't trust anyone because we are crypto bros. There are a few positive elements though. Every month, Paxos will publish a report of the reserve. The report will be certified by a third party. And finally, Paxos has a pretty good track record. This is the same company that manages BUSD, the stablecoin of Binance. So the probability of catastrophic failure is very low, even though it's not zero. Okay, and now that we are semi-reassured, on which blockchain PiUSD will be deployed? This is a very important question. PiUSD is deployed on the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum is the blockchain with the strongest security. That makes PiUSD more trustworthy. But the disadvantage is that transaction fees will be higher. This choice can seem pretty surprising considering that PiUSD will be used for online commerce with a lot of low value transactions. High transaction fees are acceptable only for high value transactions but not for low value transactions. I don't know what's the long term plan of PayPal but I guess that at some point they might move this stablecoin to another cheaper blockchain like a layer 2 scaling solution such as Polygon. Interesting detail, there are no extra PayPal fees to buy, sell or transfer PiUSD to other PayPal accounts. Which might suggest that when you do any operation within the PayPal ecosystem, it doesn't actually happen on the blockchain, but only in their centralized database. And they only interact with the blockchain if you send PiUSD to an address outside of PayPal. If what I just said is correct, integration with other Web3 projects will be more difficult because you cannot rely on on-chain data to determine the balance of an address. Okay, so we have just scratched the surface. What's really interesting is to check out the code of PiUSD because this will allow us to really understand how it works. And the code is public on the blockchain. They cannot hide anything from us. But before, I need to quickly introduce a few concepts. The first concept is smart contract. Smart contracts are small programs that run on the blockchain. Technically, PiUSD is a smart contract. The whole point of smart contracts is that nobody control them. It's fully decentralized, contrary to normal apps that are deployed on centralized server. Unfortunately, it's possible to code a smart contract in a way that break this promise of decentralization and we will see how PiUSD is guilty of this. And the second concept to understand is ERC20 tokens. A token is a digital asset on the blockchain. Technically, a token is represented by code in a smart contract. But what would happen if each token was coded differently with 100% custom code? It would be impossible for crypto exchanges to deal with so many different tokens. And we wouldn't be able to trade them. That's why tokens are standardized. The most used standard is ERC20. It gives you a template to follow. And PiUSD follows this template. This will make our analysis more simple. Okay, so now you have enough prerequisites. We can finally check out the Solidity code of PiUSD. This is the address of the smart contract. By using a blockchain explorer like Etherscan, you can search this address. And on Etherscan, you can even read the code of the smart contract. Everything is public. But wait a second, this is very strange. I was expecting to see the smart contract of an ERC20 token, but that's not the case. I don't see any function of the ERC20 interface. I don't even see any reference to PiUSD. All we see is some really strange code and the name of the contract is proxy. What is this? 
To understand what's going on, we need to take a step back and talk of upgrades. When you deploy a smart contract, it's forever. After the deployment, you cannot change the code anymore. But sometimes you still need to change the code to add a feature or fix a bug. So what can you do? You cheat! That's what you do. You cheat with a proxy. In a proxy system, there are two smart contracts, the proxy and the implementation. The proxy is like a router. All the calls are first directed to the proxy. Then the proxy forwards the calls to the implementation contract, where you have the actual logic. And in the future, if you want to update your smart contract, you deploy a completely new smart contract track with the new code and you update the address of the implementation contract in the proxy. So with this system, at any time, PayPal can decide to update the code of its stablecoin. Proxies are also used in many Web3 projects, but in most cases, there is a governance process in place. Anybody who owns government tokens can vote for the update. But in the case of PiUSD, there is no such thing. PayPal is the only entity that can decide. Not very decentralized. But this is only the proxy. What we really want to see is the implementation smart contract where we have the actual code of the stablecoin. This is the address of the implementation. And once again, we can use Etherscan to check out the code. The first thing that we note is the version of Solidity. PiUSD uses Solidity 0.4, which is pretty old. When you start a new project, in general, you want to use the latest version of whatever tool that you're using to have the latest feature and the latest bug fixes. So this choice is pretty surprising. Even more surprising, some comments suggest that the code was written in 2018 at the latest. Did they just take some old code and deploy it five years later? I don't know, but that's very strange. Moving on. At the beginning, when the coin was just deployed, the initial supply was zero. As Paxos increases its reserve of real money, new tokens will be minted. And this happened with the increase supply function. This can only be called by PayPal. And the tokens are transferred to an admin address controlled by PayPal. And we also have the opposite function decrease supply to burn tokens from the admin account. So once again, we have to rely on PayPal and trust that they will do a good job in managing the supply. Not great. Moving on to a very important function, the transfer function. That's what you use to transfer tokens to somebody else. And there are two things that surprised me. First, this when not pose modifier. PayPal has the ability to stop the transfer of all stable coins. This looks scary, but we find the same feature in many other Web3 projects. This is used to block all transactions if some unusual activities are detected, like a hack. But they cannot target any specific address for that. It's all or nothing. Back to the transfer function, the other thing that is concerning is this require statement. It means that a transfer cannot proceed if the address is frozen. What? This is ridiculous! Let's check out how the freezing mechanism works. PyUSD has a freeze function where an admin can freeze any address at any time. From what I understand, they will only do this if a code of law sent a request. Which is much better than if it was at the sole discretion of PayPal. But still, this is not ideal. But it doesn't stop there. There is another function even more scary. The wipe frozen address function can burn the tokens of an address. Burning is worse than just freezing because you will actually lose your tokens forever. Two things to note though. First, an address needs to be frozen before this function can be called. And second, strangely, the tokens are not recovered by authorities but instead are burnt. Meaning the tokens do not exist anymore and the total supply goes down. Okay, wow, that's some really scary stuff. Is there anything positive about the code? Yes, there is. Thanks to this function, we can have gasless transactions. With gasless transactions, it will be possible to transfer tokens without paying any gas fees. A list of whitelisted delegates will be pre-approved by PayPal, then the spender will sign a message allowing a delegate to do a specific transfer. This includes a maximum block number to make sure that the transaction doesn't happen too late. Then this message is sent to the delegate, which embeds it in a transaction. The PiUSD smart contract receives the transaction, makes sure that everything is correct, including the signature, and proceed to the transfer. So PiUSD is obviously a centralized stablecoin. It's not the only centralized stablecoin. USDC and Tether are also very centralized and also have a freezing mechanism. But what is really scary with the PayPal stablecoin is PayPal. 
PayPal is infamous for arbitrarily freezing customer accounts. And no, you don't need to do anything weird for this to happen. And I know this from personal experience. I got my PayPal account frozen for two years. $20,000 that I earned by selling online courses. Can you imagine if you not only have to fight to make money, but also to access the money you made? So unfair. PayPal is such an evil company. In fact, it's exactly because of companies like PayPal that we need crypto. The freeze function of the stablecoin is supposed to be called only if there is a request from a code of flow. But who knows? And what about the PiUSD held in your PayPal wallet? In this case, PayPal manages the private key for you. And as you know, not your keys, not your crypto. In this case, they can freeze your coin at the wallet level. No need to call the freeze function of the stablecoin. And it would be at their sole discretion this time. This being said, as much as I hate PayPal, even though this company is the worst abomination since the Black Plague, I have to admit this is also a huge opportunity for crypto adoption. PayPal is one of the biggest companies for online payments. They have 435 millions of active accounts. If we can leverage this network for crypto, this will be huge. For example, think of online commerce. A ton of websites allow payments with PayPal. And from now on, it will be possible to use your stablecoin balance at PayPal to make these payments. For most people, it will be a much better user experience compared to using MetaMask. This would come at the expense of decentralization, of course, but a lot of users simply don't care. And besides online commerce, PayPal also hopes that their stablecoin can also be used in decentralized applications outside of the PayPal ecosystem. That's why it will be possible to transfer your PiUSD from a PayPal wallet to an external wallet that you control. And from there, you will be able to use any Web3 project like Uniswap. Another interesting use case is in-game assets. Nowadays, a lot of online games are free and they monetize with purchases happening in the game like Fortnite or Roblox. And the last thing I like about PiUSD is that if PayPal feels comfortable doing this, it's a very positive sign for crypto. PayPal is a very regulated company. They would never do anything that put them in danger regarding regulations. So that tells us that regulators start to feel more comfortable with crypto. In the end, no matter how centralized PiUSD is, this is still a net positive for crypto and Web3 developers. And if you want to know how to make a lot of money as a Web3 developer, check out this other video. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is some serious advice on how to make seven figure in a few years as a Web3 developer. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.